Greetings and welcome to a new video about MOSFET current source design. This is our example number 8 where we discuss the cascode current design. In this case we will also use only transistors for our current design. We will see that step by step in our calculation and also verify this in SPICE simulations. So this is our circuit. We see here in total 5 MOSFETs. They are N-channel enhancement type. And the parameters for the MOSFET are shown here. They are all matched. So they have the same uh, threshold voltage, conduction parameter, and also channel length modulation. All of them has zero for lambda. But the W over L, so the width over the length in the channel, can be adjusted according to the design we need to do. What we also see is that the current mirror configuration you see here, and on top of that you see exact same current mirror configuration also. So we have on top of each other two current mirrors. Now that is the cascode operation and then this M5 will create here that reference current all together with this cascode configuration. The ID3 here is our load current that must be here and there's also a reference current here which is then one milliamp so we need to use a reference current of one milliamp here. The VD and VSS is given 2 and minus 2 volts. So let's now look at the steps we need to carry out to get the design done. The solutions, we start first with the calculations. Now we start first selecting or setting an overdrive voltage for our N3 transistor, which is here at the load current. So we set the overdrive voltage of 0.4. What does the overdrive voltage mean? So this is really an arbitrary value. So we can say this is the overdrive voltage. This is how much you are over the threshold voltage that is between the gate and the source. So this we want as 0.4. Now we can then calculate how much that gate to source voltage of that M3 must be, which is then VGA3 is equal to the overdrive voltage plus the threshold, which is then 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 must be 0 0.8. Okay. For M3, the drain current is given by this expression. We know this from the other videos. You see here in the saturation region, without the channel length modulation, the drain current is given by this parameter, which is the W over L geometry, the K sub N prime, which is this conduction parameter, depending on the mobility of the electrons and the oxide capacitance times uh, half here. This together we called capital letter N sub N. Now also this, which is the VGA3 minus the threshold quantity squared. This is the square law uh, expression for the drain current we know. Now we can express now here this expression in terms of the W over L. And then we get this ID3 over the 1 over the Kn uh, prime. And also this threshold voltage minus the, uh, the, I mean the gate to source voltage minus the threshold voltage quantity squared. You get this expression. We know what the ID3 must be, we know the Kn prime, we know the other values because we just determined the VGA3 here and then we have this expression and we can calculate that this must be 150. Now this means actually the following, W over L, the ratio must be 150. So if you have an L for the process, let's say one micrometer or one nanometer, your W must be 150 times that. So we have a multiplication factor or multiplier of 154M3. We will see that shortly in the simulator what that means. Now this ID1, which is this current, is equal to ID3. Why? Because the gate currents are all zero. So this drain current for M3 will be exact same as the ID1. And they are in series, so they have the same result, which is then 0 0.6 milliamps. And that uh, results that the VGS1 is also VGA3 because in order to have the same current you also need to have the same gate to source voltage that is also looking at this one uh, clear of course in case you have the same W over L and also the same KM prime etc but now we can calculate now for M1 that the drain current is given by this since that ID1 is equal to ID3 we can again relate this W over L for the uh, M1 here and that will give us, since the ID, the drain current, and also the VGS are exact same, we get the same result here, also 150. 
Now, VGS1 and VGS2 are in parallel. So VGS1 was 0.8, that means VGS2 is also 0.8 volts. And we also know that the ID1, ID2 is equal to ID3, similar reasoning because there is no gate current, these are all zero. And this is also equal to IRF and also ID4. So there are all one milliamp. So one milliamp here, one milliamp there, one milliamp here, one milliamp there. Here's 0 0.6 milliamp, here are six milliamp. Okay, now for M2, for this MOSFET, the drain current is then given by this expression again, expressing the W over L here is this one. And we know that ID2 is now equal to IRF, which is one milliamp. We can calculate that. And we also know the VGS2 because that was VGS1. And then we get now 250. Okay, now for M4, we have exact same as M2 because they have the same current and also the same VGS uh, value because in order to have the same current, you need to have the same uh, voltage, the gate to source voltage. So we can say that is exact same as we had for M2. Now using the Kirchhoff's voltage law all the way from the top of the circuit to the bottom from VDD to VSS, we can set up this equation. So we can say VDD is equal to the gate to source voltage of M5 plus the gate to source voltage of M4 and the gate to source voltage of M2 plus the VSS. So four additions here. And then we can express now here the VGS5 like so, VDD minus these three parts. And we know VDD, we also know the VGS4 because that is also equal to the same value of VGS2. So we can add them up here, or subtract from each other. They get a 2 minus 0 0.8, minus 0 0.8, minus minus 2 will be 2.4. So this voltage will be 2.4. This voltage will be 0 0.8. This voltage will be 0 0.8, which is also here parallel. And this was also 0 0.8. So everything is actually 0 0.8 here for the gate to sources, except this for M5. Now we have the necessary information to determine the W over L for M5, which is then directly to the expression ID4, which is the reference current, and we, we have the VGS5, and we can calculate now that this must be 10, exactly. So we have now in total five W over Ls, so the ratios, so we can bring them together here. And now look at the simulation results. So this is the summary of what we had, M5, M4, M2, M3, and M1. This is the DC analysis we see on the left side. You see here the M5, M4, M3, M2, and M1. You see also here the multiplication factor, which is this, M of 10, M of 250, M of 250, M of 150, 150. You see here also the power supply. The reference indeed one milliamp as required, and also here 600 microamps or 0 0.6 milliamps for the reference current, I call this in this case IX. Now this is the model you need to use, in this case one of the simple models, to uh, get this uh, to these values in the simulator. The threshold voltage of 400 milliamps, uh, millivolts, I mean, and a beta, which is actually this small letter K sub M prime, is here 50 microamps per square volts. That's actually the unit here. In addition, uh, we also need to insert this multiplier that is done in this. Uh, window, so you need to click on one of the MOSFET you want to uh, select or adjust, and you can now go down and then do the device multiplier, and that's actually shown here. So for M3, for example, as an example, you see here 150, so you can just type in here any number you require, and because we wanted 150, and that's actually shown here. And then we can say that the design is then complete, and you can now check this, and we have also checked our calculations now and this is according to the design we wanted. So this is all checked. All right, this is our example number eight about the MOSFET current source design using this cascode configuration and also using only transistors to create this reference current relating to that uh, load current. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.